QuickBooks Online 2023. Create reports after second month of data input. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation with the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using incognito or you can use another browser. You can open incognito window if you have Google Chrome with the three dots in the browser and then incognito window, type into the search engine QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one Get Great Guitars is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two by going to the cog drop down and switch the view down below. We're going to be duplicating some tabs as we do every time fairly quick because we do it every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. And then we right click on the tab up top and duplicate it. And then we go back to the tab in the middle, down to the reports on the left. Open up one of the favorites, the two major financial statement reports, the balance sheet. And then if you're in uh, the other view, by the way, the business view that is, it's in the business overview and the reports. That's where the reports are located. Back to the accounting view. That's not the accounting view. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it k the heck paso dang it that's not it either here we go back to the report to the right we're gonna go down to uh the reports and then open up the profit and loss report. And let's close up the hand boogie and do a range change from 010123 to 022823. And then we'll hit the drop down and change it to months and run it. So we've got the month by month, side by side, Jan, Feb, tote. And then up to the top, closing up the boogie and change the range from 010123 to 022823 and run it running at this point in the practice problem we've done two months of data input let's just do a recap of the business and bookkeeping goals the business goal in general is revenue generation which we can generally see on the income statement that's the top part of the income statement the income line items on the income statement that's what we're trying to do here everything else on the income statement is in essence some kind of expense we have some other income down here but generally Everything else is an expense. Those are the things that we consumed in order to generate the revenue, typically in the same time frame. When we look at the balance sheet, we can break that down to the accounting equation, assets equal liabilities and equity. The assets are things that we have in the business as opposed to in our personal uh, possession because they're going to be like investments that are used to generate revenue such as investments in property plant and equipment that we're going to use in the future to create revenue the liabilities and equity are how we're financing the assets that we are investing in the business to use to generate revenue liabilities representing loans and stuff that are claims to those assets by third parties the equity representing our portion of the assets which could be generated either from us making an initial investment or through the accumulation of uh, revenue that we've had, retained earnings, earnings that we're keeping in the company that we haven't distributed in the form of dividends or draws in the case of a corporation or sole proprietorship respectively. So let's just take a, a quick recap. If we look at these line items and think about how each of those these accounts have been built, we'll do it a little bit uh, quicker this time because we did this after the first month. But I think it's useful to see what the end product is because from the bookkeeping standpoint, what we're trying to do is one, make the end product of the financial statements, balance sheet and income statement, and two, 
try to facilitate the transactions as easily as possible to foster a good relationship with people we're doing business with, customers, vendors, and employees, and also to make it so the business itself can focus most of its time not on the bookkeeping, but on whatever the business does to generate the revenue. The revenue generation is the key. Otherwise, the business does not thrive, obviously. So if, so this is going to be one of the end results, the financial statements that we might at least need to use for taxes, if not uh, for external reporting purposes. Now, of course, the cash account, that's the lifeblood of the company. So if I look at it, if I drill down on the cash account at this point in time, there's more types of transactions in the cash account than any other account. So this looks like a, a very convoluted account. And because it's the top one on the list, we start to think that the whole accounting system is, is quite chaotic. But that's just because the cash is the lifeblood of the company. It runs through every cycle, vendor cycle, customer cycle, employee cycle. And that's why the reconciliation of cash that we'll do shortly is so important because it not only double checks the cash balance, but all the transactions that are running through cash. So that's going to be a huge internal control we'll talk about later. And then we've got the accounts receivable, which is a good example of an accrual type of account, meaning uh, it's an account that deviates from a general cash basis, meaning it has some transactions in it that have nothing to do with cash, like an invoice doesn't have any cash involved but we still need it if we're in the type of company that has to track accounts receivable. That would be one where we do the work first and we got to bill the client or send them an invoice, receive the payment, and then uh, make the deposit. Now, clearly the accounts receivable is a lot less chaotic. It goes up with an invoice. It goes down with a payment. We've done two months. That's all you see here. That's all you're going to see in the accounts receivable generally. The accounts receivable has the subsidiary reports tracking the information not only by uh, date, which is what that transaction detail like a general ledger did, but also we need to track it by customer. We've got the inventory. The inventory, we can track different ways. We're, we're tracking it with a perpetual system within the QuickBooks system, kind of the more sophisticated way to be tracking inventory, but it takes a little bit more setup process to do. In the inventory account, we would expect we have these starting amounts. This is when we set up the inventory balance to, to just start out with. We're going to buy the inventory with checks or with uh, bills or with expense forms. And then we're going to sell the inventory with invoices and sales receipts. So that's what you would expect to see in the inventory account. It goes up when we buy it. We buy stuff with check forms, expense forms, or bill forms. And then we sell the inventory with invoices and sales receipts it's going to go back down and then we might have inventory adjustments that need to happen periodically to tie out the inventory to the physical count remember that the inventory also has a sub ledger breaking the inventory out by units if you're tracking it on a perpetual inventory system the payments to deposit account is that clearing account notice it just goes up and down goes and so we expect the same kind of things to happen we have payment forms sales receipts uh, increase in it and then we make the deposit and after we make the deposits it should go back down to zero as it does periodically here through our our practice problem that's what you would expect to see there if you don't see that there's probably a problem and oftentimes people have problems with that particular account short-term investments with an, it was an investment account that we we closed out here so i won't go into that in detail the furniture and uh fixture or our fixed asset accounts Notice that in this account, it's not something that we do all the time because we don't purchase uh, furniture and equipment all the time. So you don't expect to see much activity in here. And what you would expect to see is purchases typically with expense forms if you paid cash or check forms, or you might purchase and finance the equipment, which means you might have an increase due to a journal entry. This is the one that you wanna have detail in so that you can provide the documentation to your to your accountant so they can give you the information necessary to record the adjusting entries. And we'll talk more about that later. This is a type of accrual uh, account, by the way. So, which is, which means uh, we have to put it on the books as an asset, even if we paid cash for it. And you can't really deviate from that, even if 
you're on a cash based system and it, it's because there's such a big difference between when you buy something uh, and when you're going to use it that you have to deviate from a cash based system or your books are getting quite distorted in timing differences. So that's that we'll talk more about it when we get to the to the uh, adjusting entries uh, section or course accounts payable you'll expect the accounts payable to be going uh, up with a bill down with a bill check that's all you expect to be seen typically in the accounts payable it's another example of an accrual type of an account it's another example of an account that has a sub ledger like the accounts receivable broken out not by customer this time but vendor the credit card, we didn't have a lot of activity in the credit card, but it can be treated like a checking account if you use the credit card a lot, functioning in a similar way as a checking account, except that the, the liability goes up when you purchase stuff instead of the cash going down. We'll talk more about that when we get to the bank feed course or section. And then we've got the loans. So we put the two loans on the books. So let's look at the big loan here. So the loans aren't something that we take out all the time, but once we make loan payments, if it's an installment loan, we would expect the loan payments to happen periodically, say monthly, for example, and they're going to have a similar structure, although the amount that's broken out between principal and interest will differ. So we've talked about some different kind of strategies you can have for making those payments. And then we've got the taxes. So the taxes are going to be processed through payroll. If you're running payroll through the system, I won't go into that in detail, but it's got a lot of sub ledgers and whatnot related to it to comply with the laws. And then the equity section, let's go down here. Net income is how the income statement is tied into equity. This is what we have earned. So that increases equity. So that's how we are now financing our assets in part through the income that we've earned through the business, which we're not which we have not yet given to the owner in the terms in the form of dividends or draws in the case of a sole proprietorship. This owner's equity uh, is, is represents the, the amount that we've earned that we haven't given back to the owners and the investment you could break out separately, but you might just put that into owner's equity if it was a, a sole proprietorships. And then we might have draws that we'll talk more about later that would be us taking money out of the business, reducing the equity section. The income statement is tied to the equity section, the net income. It's part of the, that's how it's part of the, so this is where we stand as of a point in time. The story of how we got there is the income statement, which has income and then expenses. So top line, income line, and the income lines would go up as you would expect with just invoices and sales receipts. Now, if you're in some kinds of businesses, it might go up with a deposit if you're, just, if you're just using bank feeds to record it. But if you're using a full service accounting system, we would expect income only to go up and we would expect it to go up with just the sales forms, invoices and sales receipts. That's it. We wouldn't want too many accounts for inventory typically, just the major, the major accounts. There are exceptions to that rule, such as if you're doing gig work and you're doing deposit forms, you might label the names of the accounts by by customer but that but if you're using a full service accounting system with invoices and sales receipts you want to generally have a limited amount of income accounts usually because you then have the sub ledgers that you can use cost of goods sold is a special expense account related to inventory we're using a perpetual inventory system you would only expect it to go up in general and it would only do so with the invoices and the sales receipts because those are the sales forms that in a perpetual inventory system are, are going to record the expense of us selling the inventory. And then you've got all the other expenses down below. Again, expenses, all income statement accounts usually only go up. And then you've got income minus expenses is the net income. So you've got all of our expense. We've got the comparison accounts. There we have our total down below. Now, when we give these reports now to a a third part to like the the uh, to our client let's say now we have to think about how we're going to present these to our client because we have to pick which reports we want to give number one and number two now we have multiple periods so we could have comparative reports that we can add so remember how we can structure this we can generate the reports i'm going to memorize the reports i'm going to memorize them on a monthly basis 
then I can get into them easily and provide them to the client either by, e by emailing them, printing them, which is less common these days, or we can save them as a PDF file and then possibly email them with multiple attachments, but that's still kind of tedious. We could zip them, which I think is a better solution, or we can, uh, we can also create an Excel file. We can also put them on the cloud so that they can access them on a cloud drive we can make an Excel file and then generate one PDF file from the Excel file or use Excel and Word to create a sophisticated, more sophisticated and customized format. Or if I go to the first tab, we can go down to the reports on the left-hand side. We can use this, this manage reports tool to try to customize our reports. So let's first just group and memorize our reports. I'm gonna go into the custom reports here Last time we set up the balance sheet report, a summary balance sheet and the balance sheet, standard balance sheet, and then a summary income and, and an income statement in general. So we've got the general reports. Now those reports, if I go to the, let's go to the tab to the right, right click and duplicate, just so you can see where those are generated from. If you wanted to pull those up, I went to the, to the, uh, reports on the left hand side we went into down here there's the there's the balance sheet standard of course and then hold on a second here let me scroll down a little there's the summary balance sheet now the summary balance sheet is just basically a balance sheet report but it only has the account types instead of all the detail so that's a good report to start with and, uh, and then I customized all the reports by doing our standard, uh, I'm getting rid of the pennies, negative numbers, I'm doing, and I'm, and I'm doing the red numbers and I'm getting rid of the date, time, report basis. So that's my standard formatting that I've done. So that would be the summary report, what it's gonna look like. And then if I go back into the reports, we have of course, uh, the income statement that we put together, the profit and loss, and the summary income statement, I just collapsed some of the, the total lines. So we'll, we'll look a little bit more about them later, at them a little bit more later. But now let's do a couple comparative reports and add those into the mix here. So I'm gonna say, let's say that I want, now that I have two periods, I'm gonna say, all right, well, let's go into like a normal, pro let's do a normal like balance sheet report. And then I'm gonna say, okay, let's see if there's a couple comparative uh, reports that we could make. If I wanted to make a side-by-side -side comparison of the two periods that I have now, I could do this this way. I can go from 01, 01, 23 to 02, 28, 23. And then I could hit the drop down and say that I want to see it months, a month by month. And again, you could do it week by week. That's more or less, less common. If you had multiple quarters, you can also run one quarter by quarter. And you can also do it year by year if you had multiple years. So you can see how much many more options we have as time passes by just manipulating these reports to have comparative options to them. So I'm gonna do the quarters and run it, and uh, not quarters, what am I doing? Months, and then run it. So now we've got the side-by-side -side of the balance sheet January uh, and February. It puts the older uh, month first, and if I have multiple months, like three months, then I can do three months on the same report. But if I only have two, two periods, then it's often useful for me to do it a different way and take the difference between the two. So I might say, okay, maybe I'm gonna go back to the total this way. And then the way I can do the difference is I can run it for the second period, which in this case is 02, 01, 23. So just for the month of February, 02, 01. So just for the month of February now, which is the end of February, of course, because it's a balance sheet and it's a total only. But then I'm going to select the drop down and say that I want to see the previous period, which is January. And then I can also pick the dollar change and the percent change and run that. So now I've got February 1st, the current period, the prior period, the difference and the change. And I can call this something like maybe a comparative comparative balance sheet. And so again, we only have two periods now, two months, but if we had multiple months, you can imagine doing multiple comparisons 
for different months, uh, different quarters, uh, quarter by quarter, and so on and so forth. So you can start to think about how, what kind of reports you would have at the beginning of the year versus the end of the year, and what kind of reports you might be comparing to prior years uh, as well. There's also a question now of, should I just give them this report, which gives them the total balance sheet, as well as a summary balance sheet, which is kind of redundant, and a standard balance sheet, which is kind of redundant. Sometimes it might be useful to do that because it's easier to start out looking at a summary balance sheet and then expand on the detail, go into a more longer balance sheet, the standard, and then go into something like this, which is a comparative balance sheet. If I, but, but you might say, hey, maybe I just want to give them this because it has all the information in there and giving them the other reports is redundant. In my experience, the redundancy is good if you're doing a presentation, for example, or even just giving the reports to someone oftentimes because you don't want to overwhelm them with, with a, a report with too many numbers. You'd like to impress them with a report with too many numbers, but you probably want that one buried somewhere deeper into the, into the stack of reports and have the top report be as simple as possible because that might entice them to actually look at it for a little bit more than a second before they roll their eyes. So in any case, I'm going to customize this up top. And then let's say we're going to get rid of the cents and bracket the numbers. And then we'll say that I'm going to say headers and footers, get rid of the date, time, report basis. I'm going to run that. And then I'm going to go back to the first tab and see where I want to save it. I'm going to save it as like, a balance sheet number number I want to make this one well I'll make it number five report I'll just make it number five so I'm so I'm gonna to try to cut number them so I'm gonna save customization I'm gonna make it just number five report and I'm gonna put them under the report group that I made here month in report so I can pull them up each month and just generate them so I'm gonna save that so then if I go back to the first tab and refresh it it's going to go into this customized customized area. So now I can just generate it each month and just change the dates here, which we'll do in, in the following presentation. All right, let's do another one for the income statement. So I'm going to let's let's just I'll just hit the I'll just do right here reports and let's do an income statement, a side by side income statement, income statement. And so now I'm going to say I could do the same thing here on the income statement. Note, I could hit the drop down. Well, let's change the range first. Don't get ahead of yourself. 01, 01, 23. But myself is so slow. I hate waiting for myself. Anyways, so I could do it this way. And then I can do the month, the side by side, as we saw. Now, this is more better. This is more better for the income statement because now you've got a January and a Feb and it gives you the total. So that's great because an income statement is a timing statement. It didn't do that with a balance sheet because the balance sheet is as of a point in time. So now this report and a comparative report often would be good. Like you might run something like this for multiple months or multiple quarters that has, that has each period and the total, which is great. And then you might do a comparative report comparing two periods. So I'm just going to do the comparative report for our purposes. So I'm going to go up top. We could do the same thing on the comparative side, going back to the totals. I'm going to run it <clears throat> and I'm going to do just the month of February, 02, 01, 23. I think my voice is going, don't go voice. I need you. You're all I got. You got it. So we're going to hit the, the previous period. And then we're going to say, Let's go the dollar and the percent. Okay. So there we have it. So now we've got February 1st, January and the difference. So that looks good. And let's do the customization up top and get rid of the, uh, the, the, oh, it's already there now. I'm going to say without sense because I, I kept the other report. Okay. So the formatting is done. Okay. So let's run that. So that looks good. And then I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it a comparative, comparative income statement. 
I think I ran this not from a standard income statement, for, but from my customized area. <laughs> so in any case, that's the idea. And I'm going to customize, I'm going to save customization. See, yeah, I did. I'm going to save it as number seven, I think we're on now. Number seven, I think. Comparative income statement. Let's see if I messed it. Did I mess everything up? You messed it all up. You knocked over my sandcastle again. I didn't mean to. Where's... That one should have been num <clears throat> number six. Let's edit it. All right. Let's save it. Okay. All right, let's go back to the tab. So that looks good. Let's just run our transaction detail report now, which is not a report that we often provide to the client but it's a great report for internal reporting and we might use it for billing as we've discussed in the past. So I'm gonna right click on the tab up top and duplicate it. And let's first, I'm gonna look at the trial balance and then our transaction report. So we're gonna go to the reports on the left hand side and then I'm gonna close this up, open up the trial, well, I'm gonna go to the standard reports, open up the trial balance, the trusty trial balance and then run that from 010123 to 022823, run it. And so this is where we stand as of this point in time. So if you're checking your numbers, you can check them to this report. This is not a typical report that we provide to the client because it's got debits and credits and the whole point is to try to use the debits and credits to make the final product, but not give them debits and credits because they don't understand the debits and credits and maybe we don't typically need to fully understand the debits and credits, but it's still a useful uh, report. The debits and credits are actually a, a, a more a more quicker and easier way to look at things a lot of times, uh, actually, as you can see with this report being a lot more streamlined than the balance sheet and income statement themselves in a lot of ways. So <clears throat> let's now then right click again. I need some coffee. My voice is my voice is going. Don't do it, voice. Don't go. Don't go. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And then we're going to say for my accountant. So we got the general, the journal report, and we, which is a similar report, transaction list by date. That's the one we're going to take a look at. It's a little bit more streamlined than the journal report. Let's open that up. I'm going to make this, let's make it just for the month of February. So I'm going to go from 02, 02 that I said, 02, 01, 23 to 02, 28, 23, run it. And so the way this, the way this works is if you look at the trial balance here, let's run the trial balance on a side by side, month by month. And if you run your trial balance in as of the end of January, and your January numbers tie out to our January numbers, then if then the difference between January and February is reflected by the transaction detail report, meaning if all of your transactions in this report match ours, then we have to be at the same end point, which is going to be February. Now it's a little bit difficult to, to kind of check all your numbers on the transaction detail report because as we saw before, it has just the date, the transaction, the the name, and then the account, the primary account, and then the split account is a little difficult to see sometimes because sometimes they just have a split if there's more than two accounts affected. But this gives us a, a nice quick summary that you can look at and, and say, okay, if there's something on my side that isn't on your side, then uh, you might need to you might need to expand the date range and see if it's a date issue. And then you might need to add that if there's something on your side that's not on this side, then you want to see what happened. Is it a duplicate transaction or was it miskeyed or something like that? And then check your numbers in that way. Uh, this is also a good report for, like I say, billing possibly because you might try to bill someone instead of by hour by how many transactions you enter. Let's just open the one last report, the journal report. I'm going to right click and duplicate this. I know I'm going long here, so I'm going to do this fast. And I'm going to go to the reports on the left-hand side and close up the boogie. Close up the boogie. 
and my I have to wrap this up because my voice is threatening to leave me. I'll give you some coffee, voice. And I'm going to go into the, the journal report this time. And this is, let's make this from 020123 to 022823. And so now we've got a similar report, but this gives you all the details, gives you the, the transactions that we did. And then it gives you like the detailed accounts that were impacted from those transactions instead of just giving you a split line. This is also a useful report possibly for billing in that you can see, you can kind of take into consideration how many accounts were impacted in your billing structure. And you might do this by exporting it to Excel to use Excel to count all the lines, right? You don't want to physically count all the lines, but you can export them to Excel and use some count if functions, like count if there's something in there uh, to, to count the lines. So let's just scroll through this. It's quite a long uh, report, of course. And so there's that. Now, next time we'll get into, now that we have our reports in our custom area here, we'll get into actually grouping them together to provide them to the client.